Welcome back. Of course, this time round we're talking about women in politics. Now, you really want to listen to this lady. She has managed to convince the people of Sotik that she is actually the right leader, taking the part of a member of parliament twice. And right now, she, in fact, went ahead to, con uh, to, to convince uh, the National Assembly that she is ready to take the deputy speaker's position. Dr. Joyce Labossa, many thanks indeed for joining us. Welcome, Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank Bonjour. you. Bonjour, ça va? Absolutely, ça va bien, <laughs> She well. taught, uh, she, you, you taught French. Yes, I did. At the university. Absolutely. I did teach French, yes. Absolutely, all right. <laughs> that's what, that's what pr professional um, uh, Yes, yes, I am a, I'm a teacher, language teacher. Uh -huh. That's uh, linguistics. Uh, yeah, I was oh, in the awesome, Department awesome. of Language and Linguistics. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the last teacher. time you were in Parliament <coughs> was uh, January 9th this year. That was actually your last time as far as the 10th Parliament is concerned. Did you ever have a clue that perhaps you would actually be back as deputy speaker? None at all, really. I think at the time I was just thinking, how do I get back to this house? You know, so all my thoughts were how to convince the people of Sotik that I had done a good job, a good enough job to be given, you know, a second chance in the, in the seat. So not in my wildest dreams did I even go further than just, uh, you know, securing my seat back. So it was a real pleasant surprise that, um, you know, not only did I win overwhelmingly at the constituency, but that uh, I also came and won overwhelmingly, you know, when I applied for the position of uh, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. What um, made you want to be Deputy Speaker? I guess a number of things. Um, the first of all, the fact that during the 10th parli parliament, I had um, I'd been temporary speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, there's um, a group of four members of parliament called the, the, the speaker's panel. So I was in the speaker's panel. And um, when we got back, I, I realized that I was the only member of the speaker's panel that, uh, that got re-elected back. So I thought, OK, so you've had a practice at this. You can do it. And I thought, told myself, no way am I not going to take the chance when the opportunity presented itself. Mm. Yeah. Just looking at uh, even <coughs> your performance, you're actually battling it out against uh, you know, men. And uh, you took the lead with 254 votes against uh, uh, Abdi Qadir Aden's 90 votes. Mm -hmm. And it is reported, actually, that you are the only woman member of parliament to have shown interest in the position. What is happening? Women don't want these positions? Well, of course, you <laughs> are one of them. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if they, 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 they saw my name and decided, no, they don't want to co <laughs> compete with me. Um, but I think more importantly, it's not you know, like just any other position. I think um, a lot of them may have felt that you needed to have at least some practice. Uh, you know. And secondly, um, a lot of the other, w uh, a lot of the women that have come into the house are first timers. There are quite a few that are, you know, that have been have been there before. But a lot of them are first timers, and um, really to to go for the position of speakers, um, uh, you know, for, of for, for speaker, you would need to have some some level of. Um, uh, you know, experience. Mm. And, and, and so I think um, the fact that I had had some experience and had, you know, I believe I'd performed fairly well, you know, in the, in the 10th parliament. Yeah, they may have felt, no, no, if uh, Joyce is going for the position, <laughs> maybe I don't want to compete with her. Right. <laughs> will, will it be a challenge? Will it be a challenge that <coughs> if you look at the uh, previous, uh, majority of previous speakers were lawyers? Yes. That were not a lawyer, you are a linguist. Mm -hmm. Will it um, pose a challenge on your performance? Um, I don't think so. I, I think I have a good mind, which no, not necessarily a, a lawyer's mind, but I believe um, what the speaker requires is, is, is really a level-headed person um, who can be fair, who can <coughs> look at things objectively. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and, um, uh, and give rulings that, that, that are well informed. So, and, and there is enough support in, in, in parliament. We have a, a very robust um, um, uh, uh, legal department. And um, we have very experienced uh, clerks in the house. So 
when you really uh, feel that no, this uh, I'm not very sure about this. There's always time to, to say, let's consult further. We can um, defer this ruling until until tomorrow or until a at another time for you to get further um, information and um, you know really get yourself well informed so that when you give a ruling, you give a ruling that is balanced, that is um, that is fair, and that is informed. Perhaps just to look at, um, <coughs> of course, you were elected under the URP banner, and this is actually a response uh, that is already in uh, the public domain. What is your response to, uh, for instance, Mika Keegan's article uh, saying that election of Senate and Parliament speakers has cast Jubilee in bad light, basically saying the selection of speakers and deputy speakers by the Jubilee Coalition has been seen as based on chronism and not meritocracy? Well, of course, all of us have our opinions. You know, you, 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 we cannot deny him his opinion. It is, after all, a pa an opinion. Um, but, um, you know, um, there is the tendency in, uh, in Kenyan politics to always uh, believe that uh, when politics has not gone your way or when you haven't had your, your, your say or your way, then it's not the, the person is not meritorious. But isn't it? Yes. It is not not necessary for you. Yes. Because if you really you have you have an experience of being in the speaker's have, panel. Yes. But if you look at the elected speaker, generally mm -hmm. Justin Maturi, yes, who was you know was seen to be very close to Uru, <coughs> and that's the reason why uh, the, the, this article may be justified. The fact that he was not in my parliament, you know, like the f previous speaker, he was elected in parliament first, then he resigned to be made speaker. Marende. Now this Muturi came from nowhere, from oh. the Monte Center for no, Party no. Democracy, to be elected speaker. <laughs> I think you are not being very fair to my speaker because he was he a was member my of student, parliament. I know him. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but yes. I'm saying yeah. he was a member of parliament in Before. the ninth yeah, parliament. In the ninth parliament. In the ninth parliament. Yes. And uh, I remember that um, actually this is this uh, the the um, uh, this constitution actually really did not want you to have to be a member of parliament at the time that you're being elected. Yeah. So that is why I'm sure Marinde may, may have wished to, would have also still stood this time round and then to be get, get re-elected. But you, you realize that he, did not he didn't stand in any, in any constituency this time round. He had stood the first time. So really, um, I would not want uh, uh, the speaker to be judged before he has even um, had an opportunity to tell, to, to, for you to know whether or not he's a, he, he, he deserves to get that seat. Um, I think let's give, let's give him an opportunity, and I'm sure he will prove a lot of people uh, wrong. Yes. True, true. He's a lawyer. He's yes. uh, been a magistrate, yes, uh, been yes. a member of parliament. Yes. But my position is that, that, that the, the, the uh, argument by the Kigan <coughs> that he was very close to uh, Uru Kenyatta. And hence the, the, the push. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think it's not, uh, I that mean, that and, and people are allowed to have friends. Yeah, I don't think uh, really you should fault anybody <laughs> for, yeah, being for being anybody's friend, friend because somebody yeah. is going to be one, uh, one yeah, or the other right. person's friend. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even the one who is spe speaking is also somebody's friend. And maybe, course, so really, yeah, I yeah. think um, the bottom line is, I, um, you know, being in the speaker, uh, being the speaker of the National Assembly, we will be judged by what he actually does. Okay. And I believe he's going to follow the law. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and it will be the law that is going to determine how well he is going to perform on that yeah. on that seat. Not the fact that he's um, he's been Uhuru's friend. Yes, he's uh, he is, and uh, admittedly he may be his friend. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, it is his, his performance at matter, the job right. that he has been given. And how would you respond to this article um, that basically said it has also been observed that political loyalty and ethnic interests took center stage in the crucial House elections. <laughs> An um, article that was published uh, March 31st okay. standard okay. this year. Uh, political loyalty. And ethnic interests. And ethnic interests. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you know, politics in Kenya still continues to be very much ethnic based. And it is not ethnic based only on uh, the Jubilee side. It's equally yeah. ethnic based in the on, on, on the court side. So really, um, you cannot fault anybody for f for making the right political decision. But you don't you know. So, so really, when <coughs> when you say the elections were were were, were based, um, I won't go as far as to say um, you know ethnic based. We better say you know party based because I can assure you that uh, my party URP we are literally everywhere in this country. 
really we have w we have in northeastern we are in nyanza in uh, korea we have an mp there we are in western we have two mps in from teso community we are in you know so really uh, that's why i'm saying clarify or, or you know and, and put it as more party based yes it is true and uh, yes predominantly the parties are were, were from particular uh, ethnic communities, but by and large, um, it, it was more the loyalty to the party and to the party. But, but uh, no, I, 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 I wasn't to disagree about that, because <laughs> even if you look at Western <laughs> countries, yes. when Obama became president, yeah. what kind of people did he appoint uh, in, his, in his cabinet? And there are people who are close to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is permissible anyway. Mm -hmm. But my yeah. question is you, to you <laughs> is uh, whether how you compare and how do you foresee 11 the parliament as compared to the 10th parliament. These are many people now, and um, <laughs> the 10th <ten, the> <laughs> parliament was very unpopular uh, <laughs> to, some, to, to, an, to an inch because of the way they behaved in terms of the, their salaries and packages. <laughs> and even oh, these wa the ones have uh, come already, they started demanding. making noise. <coughs> Do you, I mean, uh, the 10th parliament may have become unpopular, but I don't really think the 10th Parliament achieved a lot, really, the for day. this country. I mean, to, to just narrow it down to the question of salary is really doing a disservice to, to the 10th Parliament because they really saw us through the new constitution. They passed all, you know, there have never been any laws that have been passed in such a short while like the number that was passed during the 10th Parliament. So to be fair to the 10th Parliament, they did their best, really, under the very tight uh, schedules and tight programs that were there. So let's not narrow it down to only the question of, of, uh, of, of salaries. And even this issue, I don't want to comment too much because uh, we have not really gotten the full brief on where, um, where this, uh, this issue of the salaries is. But um, I mean, really, even, even yourselves, you can imagine there are members of parliament who have um, who are on their fourth term? Some even on their fifth term of being members of parliament. And even if it was you, they were going there knowing what they were going for, you know, and why they were choosing to 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 stand for for for, for office. And then suddenly you've been earning a certain amount for the last uh, almost 20 years, and then you come to the 11th Parliament and you are told that has been halved, <laughs> you know. So, so, so yes, it is. It's, it's not. It's really. I mean, let's not look at uh, the parliamentarians like they're just being unfair. And, and some people have been saying, "Oh, you should have known what you what you are coming into." But if you notice, all these things of the actual what the actual amount was came almost when we were almost actually uh, done with uh, almost going into elections. So, I, I think we need some sobriety um, in the discussion of um, this whole question of, um, of, uh, of, of salary uh, and also to look at uh, how what kind of personnel then or what kind of members of parliament are you going to to attract if you really like half their salary that's one and then secondly the question of um, um, you know what, what um, what responsibility? Because some of the, 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 the issues that have been mentioned is that uh, really members of parliament don't really have a job description uh, as such. And, uh, and uh, I can assure you, um, I have um, my plate is more or, or a lot more uh, full as a member of parliament than I ever was, whether as a high school teacher or as a, or a, as a university lecturer even though my job description was clearly cut to what I was going, what I was going to do. But as a member of parliament, I can assure you, it is, you, you may, you are, you are really like the social security person of your, of your constituency. And th that money, even, even if you are to pay us even three million or five million, it can never be enough. Because really, the level at which I, I made this may be controversial, but it, it is until we sort out the poverty levels in our, in, our, in our country, until we sort out the unemployment, until we sort out all the things that make everybody now look at you as the only person that, is, uh, that has, that is able to, to support you. The do, you think, do you think this salary this. business and the allowances <coughs> will return members of parliament like it used to be before, during my time, where members of parliament used to be paid to ask questions. They used to be corrupted uh, because they were getting little, little money. And uh, you think that might come back to, and, and to that is what I think that's the one reason that we have been trying to get out of. 
because I'm told members of parliament, these are stories to us because we didn't have yeah. to, to do that. But yeah. every Friday, somebody would have to go to the president's office so that you are given <coughs> something yeah. little yeah. to take to go, go back to the constituency and, and be able to you know, actually meet your constituents. You don't want to take members of parliament back there. Um, and so really, um, a decent uh, um, a re uh, salary uh, ensures that uh, you can be sufficiently independent in your, in your mind, in your, in your contributions, in, um, in your voting, so that you, you don't really have to, to say, if I don't do it this way, I'm done. You know, I have to, uh, I'll not be able to, to you know, be able to uh, go back to the constituency or see my constituents. And they are not going to stop uh, making demands. Even if you say you are going to give us uh, 50,000 today, they will not stop making the demands. Yeah, because that is the level at which the, the way, the, the, the culture that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, the one I have been brought up. Mm. Talking about po party politics, just to wonder, <coughs> are you really politically loyal? Especially looking at your past, you ditched ODM for URP towards the end. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I mean uh, at um, at every every I mean every politician you 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 know you have to make decisions based on what you see is is is, is in your best interest. They always say politics is about interest. Yeah. It's it, it's not about uh, you know. Uh, yes, I was in ODM and uh, and, and and was a loyal member of ODM, but. Um, you know, I represent the people of Sotik, and at the end of the day, it is the people of Sotik who we sat and we said, okay, um, which is the political direction that, um, that we are taking. And really, it was a, a, a consensus. We agreed, and I, I said, no, after all, at the end of the day, if I want to represent a people that are in, in one party and Yet I'm in another. Then I'm, I'm really not. Uh, I'm not representing them. I must be representing other interests other than the ones that are from the people that that put me in that seat. Mm. And uh, so, mm. yes. Uh, just a follow-up question. There was an interview that was conducted on Standard in 2009, and you said that people said your honesty would would be severely hampered by your venture into politics. Would you say that there are certain occasions that you were compromised to be dishonest as a member of parliament? Um, I have tried to be very, uh, to keep reminding myself that at the end of the day, there is life after politics, that I will still should be able to hold my head up even when I'm done with politics. So as much as possible, I have really tried to say or do that which I believe is sitting well with my conscience. Um, and so um, compromised, I won't say that much. Maybe when I felt that um, I'm not altogether um, happy or comfortable, I keep quiet. I won't make the comment so that I am not seen to be either in this way or the other way. When I feel it is n it's really not um, going to be or, or it's not sitting well with my conscience, then I choose to keep quiet or not to be there during that debate. So are you basically <coughs> saying that you have never been dishonest throughout mm, your office? Not, uh, of not, office. Not, not, not consciously, let me not say that. Yeah, not going out of my way consciously to be dishonest. But I may have said something that maybe was not completely true, but not that I was aware that it was not, uh, that, that that was the fact. <laughs>